Welcome back to Pentagram Prime, everyone. Today we'll be taking a break from the equations and uh, talking, at least for a moment, about STS-132, which launched on May 14th of 2010 from uh, Kennedy Space Center. And uh, ticket prices for uh, Kennedy Space Center can be rather high, which is why people like me prefer the McDonald's near Titusville. I was lucky enough to be there. Good times both getting to this launch and uh, getting out of there during the typically four hour traffic jam that ensues after a manned flight. So for those of you who are hoping to see Crew Dragon uh, go up when the time comes, uh, just uh, be advised you're, you're in for quite a quite an issue with uh, traffic as well as not being able to get a single hotel room. Believe me, I looked while I was there. I never invested much interest in uh, what was actually on this mission, but uh, you know, who wants to deal with reality? We got the fantasy world of Kerbal Space Program where you both don't have to worry about human life and uh, having to actually pay for your rockets. So we're going to be doing the EVA on Duna mission, um, which is a, it's one of a group of scenarios that come up after you go through the, uh, the standard uh, training uh, pipeline, I'll call it. Um, I've done it several times. Uh, I've shot a ton of video. I'm blowing up my hard drive with, uh, with uh, video. Um, so what I decided is that since I'm having such a big issue with video editing, I'm going to record this in several parts and upload the videos individually. Um, it's going to be like a rapid fire upload. There'll be uh, one after the other. So if you're watching this, you're probably watching part one of, it might be a five-parter. I don't know what this is going to turn out to be. But we'll just, uh, we're going we're gonna to do baby steps. And I'm going to save it each one of these baby steps, which I feel kind of bad about. I, I want to do the whole flight in one, uh, in one piece, but um, I also got to make sure that this video is reasonably watchable. So I'm going to go to a save point, and then I'm going to shoot the next section. And if I have to reshoot it several times, so be it. Because uh, I don't want you to have to sit there while I reboot and uh, re, uh, refly the mission several times. and um, yeah, Some attempts are worse than others. Um, so we are taking off from the surface of Mars to get uh, um, Sousa Kerman back to her home planet of Kerman. Um, so for those of you not initiated to the uh, Kerbal Space Program or... KSP universe. Um, what we do, um, what Kerbal Space Program is, is uh, it's like a miniature version of the solar system. Uh, Kerbin is smaller. Duna is smaller than Mars. Uh, Kerbin is smaller than Earth. It is the proxy for Earth. Um, in case you haven't noticed, the Kerbals are only about three feet tall. The atmosphere is actually thinner on that planet um, than it would be normally on Earth. Um, and uh, that's just the, the way they do things in this game. I think some of the planets in um, Kerbal um, are actually bigger than their solar system equivalents. Um, but basically, most things are smaller. And, um, you know, the physics is uh, adjusted accordingly. And that's one of the reasons why this game is not is not just uh, a great game. It's also it's a simulator for a lot of things. Um, so just things need to be kept in mind. Uh, they did a release at expansion packs some time ago, uh, where everything is adjusted so you can read you can simulate uh, Earth-like missions, uh, Apollo missions, uh, space shuttle abort scenarios that. Um, yeah, space shuttle abort scenarios. Those are scary. Um, 
In fact, it, it blows my mind that I worshipped that machine as much as I did as a child, only to find out what kind of a death trap it actually was. And, um, well, we can talk more about that later. Um, but suffice it to say, um, you did not uh, get to simply jettison the tanks and the rockets and just fly back. So there is Sousa Kerman looking uh, uh, totally stoked. Um, she seems to be enjoying her job uh, more so than I ever enjoyed any of mine. Um, so we won't always have this view on, but uh, you can see her, uh, you know, in her little capsule there. And um, she's sitting on top of what really is a glorified gas canister. Um, I'll show you the... Uh, orbital view here. So here's Sousa. Here is the capsule that she is going to try to uh, link up with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on stability control and I'm going to set this capsule as our target. And then we are going to uh, use a feature called time compression, which basically just keeps us from waiting, having to wait for things to orbit. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, let this thing come around. Um, now there are, um, as you may have heard just in the media, there are certain launch windows for traveling between planets. Um, I had thought about going ahead and waiting for that change to happen while Sousa stayed on the surface and maybe I'll fly that version of it some other time but generally what happens is in this game you launch, you get to your rendezvous point and then and I know this sounds strange you spend a year or two sitting uh, waiting for the uh, the planet to come into alignment which kind of ludicrous I think it'd be safer to stay on the surface but um, it's just a game so if you look down here on the navigation ball, the target indicator is going to show up right around here and previous experience has taught me that that's generally a good place. So I'm going to get it to about there and then I'm going to save and uh, you'll, those of you who want to can come back and watch this thing take off. Just going to get a little bit closer. The thing about um, time compression is it, it messes with the physics of the game. So if you're firing your engines or anything else or traveling too close to a celestial body, um, the, the software will straight up keep you from doing it. Um, will keep you from using time compression under certain circumstances because it just makes it more difficult for it to carry out all the little simulations that it does. Let's see... No, I think I see it on the horizon. It's right next to the little red thingy there. A little closer. Okay, so you can see a faint little uh, pink thing, and uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to create a save point. Uh, we'll call this uh, I don't know. Uh, well, this is episode six, and uh, surface. Yeah, we'll go with that. All right, this is Pentagram Prime signing off.